Welcome to another episode of Equity Mates, or should I say, hey there, my friends, it's your lightning fast buddy, and welcome to another electrifying episode of Equity Mates, where we're not just sprinting through the world of investing, we are breaking world records. As always, I'm joined by my equity buddy, Ren, and who am I? Uh, Bryce, you are Usain Bolt. Yes. I actually was going to say you're Lightning McQueen. Now, that's a reference that I don't think you'll get. I don't think so, no. No, you haven't seen the classic Disney movie Cars. Oh, not to be able to reference that. Yeah, no. your pop no. culture knowledge is <laughs> no. uh, subpar. But uh, <laughs> Usain Bolt. Correct. Again. Well done. He's done it again. Uh, note for producer Sasha, we need to make this harder, please. So- <laughs> <laughs> Well, Bryce, like you, Usain Bolt, we've got a lot to get through in a short space of time. That analogy doesn't quite work because he actually runs shorter distances. Let, like Lightning McQueen, let's keep rolling. Yes. Uh, we're here to talk all things investing. And as a reminder, as we get started, whilst we are licensed, we're not aware of your personal financial circumstances. This show is for education and entertainment purposes only. The one drawback of getting ChatGPT to translate your introduction is that the disclaimer often gets lost. Well, we can get it, get ChatGPT to do the disclaimer, but I feel like that would yeah, be yeah, uh, legally irresponsible yeah, anyway. anyway uh, a lot to get through today. We're going to be answering a question from Equimates listener Will uh, about all things leveraged ETFs. And the timing on that was good because uh, you've done a lot of work on leveraged ETFs recently. So excited to hear about that. We're going to be rejoined by Specky McGee. Now, people uh-huh. who are new to the show, first of all, welcome. Secondly, you're in for a treat. Specky McGee is our anonymous uh, Specky tipster. Uh, he gets a lot of uh, information across his desk that he brings to the show via the Specky Information hotline. is debatable. Yeah, we'll get to it. <laughs> uh, but first of all, Bryce, let's get to the news of the moment because there is a lot going on. The earnings fire hose continues over in the United States. Um, but first of all, unfortunately, we are in a correction. We are in a correction, Ren. It's sort of snuck up on us. Now, technically, a correction occurs when you are, the market drops 10% from its high and then you hit a bear market once you're 20% or more below the most recent high. Now, now, now technically, I actually don't think we're in a correction in Australia. No, sorry, US. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And technically, I actually think we've already come out of it. Oh, really? We've bounced back well, since I think the time of writing this. Yeah, I think it's... I was looking this morning and I think it's less than 10%. Oh, damn. Me. Well, at the time of putting that in the note, we but, were at 10. But, but like, you know, there or thereabouts, it, the, the number is kind of arbitrary, 10%, 9%. The fact of the matter is we've seen a bit of a sell-off recently. Yeah, well, the market seems just to be going sideways at the moment. Like within that sort of 10%, and this is sort of from, I would say you know, I'm, well, I'm not going to say it was from sort of late July. Sorry, I'm just, you said I'm going to say and then you said I'm not going to say and then you said it anyway, so. <laughs> well, I mean, I, it alluded to that I was just going to make up an arbitrary date and be like, oh, I reckon it was from this point in time. But so did you or? No, that's what I said. <laughs> anyway, that, no, keep that. No, so from, <laughs> like- from mid-July, uh, it's been trading sideways somewhat and uh, the, the trend has been down, I think, uh, at the time of, looking into this sorry from mid-july it hasn't been trading sideways it's down 10 percent. well we're back up <laughs> <laughs> it's down now seven and a half percent yeah, okay. from the end of july yeah so in the last week it's up about three percent for me like all of this conversation is so arbitrary and so short yeah. term yeah the markets yeah. The american markets up 11 percent for the year yeah crazy the australian market asx 200 is down two percent um but yeah, for me, it's just the, like... The, the NASDAQ's up 35% year to date. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and everyone talks about the Magnificent Seven, Yeah, um, the big tech stocks who have... This is S&P 500. Uh, without, the big five, without the big seven, I think the S&P 500's up 0.1% or something. It's like they've just driven it, big tech stocks. They, yeah, and they continue to... Year to date, 35%. I think my bold prediction was going to be 3%. Yeah, well, we were coming into the year and things were looking pretty gloomy. Yeah, 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 very gloomy. Anyway, look, I think my thoughts on this is the overall market is driven by the performance of individual companies 
and the performance of individual companies is really tied to the broader economy at the moment. Mm. And the story that we've been living through all of last year and all of this year is the inflation and interest rate stories. Mm. And here in Australia, that story had another page written uh, with data that came out last week from the Bureau of Statistics. Yeah. Uh, so this data for the September quarter, inflation data, surprised on the upside. And in this case, surprising on the upside is bad. Mm. Um, the consumer price index rose 1.2% for the quarter. Economists expected 0.9%. Now, that difference doesn't sound like a lot, but the fact that it was higher than expected isn't great. Um, the 12 months to September 2023, inflation is 5.4%. Again, higher than, or higher than desired. And what that means is that higher rates are coming. Higher rates are coming. Interestingly, overnight, the Federal Reserve at the time of recording held rates where they were in the US. Yeah. But it, the, the sense was that they're definitely not going down for a while. Yeah. yeah. Now, there's no certainties in life and investing, but it's the Melbourne Cup next Tuesday. Yeah. And there is, there is a short odds favourite uh, for next Tuesday. And it's not any of the horses running. <laughs> it's, it's an interest rate rise. It's an interest rate rise. Because the yeah. RBA also meets on Melbourne Cup Day, first Tuesday of every month. Uh, Melbourne Cup is first Tuesday of November. Um, uh, we were, I, I was listening to Comedian The Economist this morning. Uh, great podcast. Go and give it a listen. Also, Adam from Comedian The Economist hosted the buy, hold and sell episode that came out on the Equity Mates podcast last Tuesday and will be out again tomorrow. Um, so go and listen to CVE if you want more from Adam and his brother Thomas. Uh, they were talking about the potential of an interest rate rise and this inflation data. Uh, bond market is pricing uh, is giving it a ninety percent chance that there will be an interest rate rise at this meeting. Ninety mm. percent. So if you if you rewind six months ago, maybe within the last six months, the consensus has been that there there will be one more rate rise yeah. this year. Yeah. But I think that was probably said uh, at a time where these inflationary pressures were not surprising on the upside. Uh, what is also interesting, we are talking in the office before recording, is that house prices are at near record highs again here in Sydney. And the, 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 the RBA needs to take the sting out of this stuff. So... I don't think... Yeah. It's... I don't, I don't think that that's possible. No. With the like with the migration numbers, but then how that do they then need to do, do they then need to look at how they're actually measuring because housing costs yeah. rent goes into yeah. CPI yeah we're moving out of our house for um for we bought a house obviously yes. I told my landlord that we were moving and that uh, we had some mates who wanted to move in and could take over the lease. They were prepared to pay more than we were currently paying. We're currently paying 750 bucks a week yep. for a, uh, they call it a two betty. It's a one betty plus a small study. Mm. They then went to the landlord who has already increased our rent 25% in the last 12 months. The landlord came back and said, I'm taking it from 750 to 950. <laughs> 950 Wild. a week. Yeah. $200 increase in rent. And like, you can't, like, th they just said, we know we're going to get it. Yeah. Like, we're going to get this. And yeah. so, like, far out. How, how do the RBA take that into consideration? Interest rates aren't going to. Yeah. It's yeah. Just yeah. I mean, interest rates are a pretty blunt instrument, and when the two biggest contributors to the continued inflation numbers are housing costs, which is just a supply and demand problem at the moment, and fuel, fuel. which is a war in the Middle war. East problem at the moment, yeah. there's not a lot that interest rates can do, yeah. except destroy demand, yeah. and that's an economic turn for literally just price people into Make not being able to spend. To spend. Yeah. yeah. Um, Which is not a scenario we want to get so to. So, th like, there's not a good answer here. The IMF also came out last week and said that Australia needs uh, to keep lifting rates to bring down inflation. Hmm. Um, but it's, yeah, you know, like, interest rates could go to 8%, but if there's war in the Middle East and we're adding double the amount of people as houses we're building 
it feels like structurally you don't have a good answer there. Mm. So unfortunately, like this is a very the very unsatisfying part of the show where we <laughs> lament something. Well, I'm just that thinking we should probably don't get, have a lot of We should probably over. try and get Chris on the phone for fif- 15 minutes, but that'd be near impossible. Chris probably, Joy. Yeah, just yeah. to get his sense because as we've said multiple times, he has somewhat thought that there's another large tra- tra- tranche of rises coming. So. Mm. Anyway, well, to close out the interest rate conversation, last week we spoke about the choice between fixed and variable rates yep. for your home loan. Yeah, uh, I asked in the Facebook discussion group uh, after the episode what people thought. Not surprising, strong opinions. Variable. Uh, the The majority thought variable. Yeah, yeah. they. The majority. Um, w- there was one uh, Ryan in the Facebook discussion group. Uh, he he made the point that the house always wins. And the banks in this case are the house, and they're going to put a fixed rate at a point where they are going to win. Win, yeah, yeah. which is what they, which is what they've done. We've figured out. It's my like- my thought back to Ryan is that the house certainly didn't win the last few years. With fixed, like people who fixed their rate when there was a one or a two in front of it, true, they definitely beat the banks. Um, so I don't know if the house always wins. I don't know. Like for me, you know, what we're talking about now. Is there not going to be another one rise? You probably want to stay variable if it's going to be like three, if four. You're looking, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you want to be fixed. Yeah. The good news is it doesn't have to be a decision that is made and yeah. locked in from day one. Yeah. So that's that's probably allowing me to sleep at night. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, the good news is that you your rent isn't going from six hundred and something to nine fifty. I know. Yeah. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It's greedy. Oh, let's not get Any, into that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's move on because there's plenty more news happening. Yep. Uh, Twitter. X. X. Uh, yeah. Headline that grabbed the, my attention this week. They, uh, if we rewind to when, I've said rewind twice now, rewind to when Musk bought Twitter at a $44 billion valuation. Had to uh, borrow, I think, well, he put in about 14 or $15 billion himself, borrowed the rest from the big banks. It is now valued at $19 billion, so it's wiped off a considerable chunk. This is based on the shares that are now being offered to staff members at $45 a share. So that's what X are valuing themselves at, $19 billion. Rumor has it that Musk is trying to drive this company down to a point where he can then buy back the debt from the major banks that are, that uh, took it off him or that have... Uh, I guess, given him the money and then he can uh, take full control. Apparently, in a situation where these big investment banks come in and and, uh, do buyouts like they have, they then actually go and on-sell the debt to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, But no one's buying the X debt at the moment. So they're stuck with it. So there's uh, rumors that Musk himself wants to buy it back. Speaking of uh, companies down the toilet, Ren, also WeWork are rumored to be filing for bankruptcy within the next week or so. The share price has tanked 50%. It could be the end of WeWork. Yeah, what a story. <laughs> that was, what, a $45 billion company at one stage? Yeah. Adam Newman, the founder, uh, walks away with a billion, a billion dollar yeah. handshake as yeah. part of the... Yeah. Uh, like he was... He, he was just forced out of the company dollars, yeah. and he, but he got a bill, billion yeah. dollars to walk away, yeah. which is more than any WeWork shareholders will get. Uh, it's currently worth $121 million. Yeah. Unbelievable. Crazy. Unbelievable. But anyway, let's move to the earnings because it is continuing over in the States and uh, we're going to just do a bit of a summary. Last week we did big tech and big tech is getting bigger but there are some other key takeaways that are coming out of this reporting season. Yeah, two key ones. First one is the inflation story continues. Now, um, over in the US, uh, the Fed, Federal Reserve decided not to raise interest rates, kept them in that 5.25 to 5.5% band. So it's, you know, it's meaningfully higher than Australia's. But um, what we're seeing in companies reporting numbers is inflation coming through. So McDonald's, reported a 14% increase in revenue and an 8% increase in same-store sales despite falling foot traffic. So less customers, but increasing revenue means one thing. Increased prices. Yeah. (laughs) And don't get at me about increased basket size because it's not that. It's increased prices that are driving this. Yeah. Yeah. Increase in uh, the Big Macs and... Whatever else. Are you just going to list them in your <laughs> yeah, I was thinking, I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> um, and then another 
big food uh, player, Coca-Cola, they reported an 11% uh, in non-GAAP revenue growth. So like how they account for it. Um, so 11% revenue growth, just for simplicity. Uh, and they said that was made up of 2% volume growth. So selling more Coke and other products and 9% uh, price or mix growth. So mix is like selling more expensive products. But again, it's the price of the products going up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so two big American staples, inflation is coming through the system still. We saw that with Coles and Woolies, I think, when they reported. So um, not surprising, particularly in retail when this is all pushed through. Second takeaway, Ren, the EV hype has now turned into the EV reality. Mm. Stop thinking about EV companies as tech stocks and start thinking of them as capital intensive, mm. low margin manufacturers yeah because that's what car makers are and and the reality is starting to hit for a lot of these companies so tesla's share price is down 18 percent since it's reported a couple of weeks ago um it had to cut prices to hit sales targets Mm. so obviously that affected revenue and profit um ford who have made a massive bet on evs i think they said they're going to spend 12 12 billion billion. over a certain period of time uh their ev business unit posted a loss of 1.33 billion for the quarter, um, which was bigger than the quarter before. They had plans to build a like a mega campus for lithium ion batteries in Kentucky in the States. They've put that on hold. They've got another big project they're building in Tennessee that's gonna go ahead, but they are slowing down their spending as their losses increase. Um, General Motors is also pushing back production of its new slate of EVs. Mm. Um, Again, just demand isn't quite where they want it to be and pricing is not quite where they want it to be. Yeah, so it feels like they've all taken bets when Tesla was absolutely screaming away. They've all taken bets, want to get in the game. I think that's an interesting point though, Ren. I can't remember where I heard it. Maybe it was on a podcast or or on the news um, that there was a survey done maybe... 12 or 18 months ago to see the, um, I guess, the desire for Americans to buy EV vehicles. Um, That has now, they've redone it and it's now got worse. Like more Americans have said they're less likely to buy EVs now than they were 18, 24 months ago. Mm. It's an interesting story. Like across the board as well just ESG generally feels like it's out of fashion it's out of fashion yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like funds are getting pumped um, a big investment uh, I guess firms that had all of this strategic plays around ESG are pulling back on what they're doing it's, it's really interesting to see how the consumer is changing their tune yeah. when it comes to this stuff it'll turn yeah yeah but anyway um I've seen a lot more pole stars in Australia. I don't know if you've noticed that. What are like pole stars? The EV. Are they the, is that the T? Uh, yeah, yeah. I think it's meant to be a... St- like a... Like a yeah, yeah, a I know what you're talking t- about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I've gotten an Uber uh, and it was one of them. It was pretty nice. Big... The thing that all these EVs have, big sunroofs. Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah like yeah. Tesla's got them. Yeah. This one has it as well. I want an EV. Yeah. Yeah, it's just really hard when you don't have somewhere to be able to charge it. That is a key <laughs> consideration, yeah. yes. Um, yeah, I, I think the, the EV story isn't going away. Like, it's just that there's more competition. And yeah, you're right. There's a general sort of anti-ASG sentiment in some parts. But, yeah. you know, the, the story is also these Chinese and European car makers are having a red hot crack. Like, BYD continues to go from strength to strength. The Chinese car maker and and more of the europeans are getting involved um so it's yeah. just it's it's car making has never been as uh yeah sexy and as sexy as yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It, maybe in like the early 1900s when you know and these car makers also don't have someone like musk in the media leading them pumping them up mm. being the salesman yeah that yeah, has yeah. It really led to half of tesla's valuation yeah yeah <laughs> like for evs to get where they need to be from an environmental perspective we've got to start thinking stop thinking of teslas as lux- luxury cars you know like the the ferraris and the lamborghinis and start thinking of them as toyota camrys yeah and toyota camrys <laughs> are mass market yeah. low margin products yeah and that's just the reality 
that these car makers are finding themselves in. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing wrong with a Toyota Camry, though. No, no, 100%. <laughs> All right, Bryce, let's take a quick break here. And then on the other side, we have a question from Will. Uh, he wrote through on Instagram to ask about leveraged ETFs. And you've done a lot of work on that. So uh, a good time for us to chat about that. Welcome back to Equity Mates. A reminder that if you have a question that you want us to answer on the show or you want us to put to one of Australia's best financial advisors, hit us up, ask at equitymates.com. We're going to uh, answer a question about leveraged ETFs. Uh, but before we do, Bryce, I've got to say, you haven't mentioned a big change. Your, your <laughs> face. <laughs> if you're watching YouTube, you will understand what I'm talking about. If you are following our Instagram page, you would have seen last week that we are doing Movember. Mm. It is that time of year where we shave our faces and grow a moustache in support of raising money for men's health. And Renner's has shaved his beard, which has I don't can't remember the last time that you shaved your beard. Yeah. But not only that, I can never remember a time where you had no hair, no hair on your head and no hair as a beard. Yeah. Now, uh, <laughs> I, I've been wearing a hat so far because <laughs> yes. I thought I would do... On camera, the Mr. Potato Head reveal. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> you go. The overwhelming comment has been, uh, how much do we need to donate for you to shave the eyebrows as well? Oh my goodness. Do Is we, there an answer to that? Do we put a number on it? Is there well, an answer to what that? What number would you put on it? I no, know that, they're this my is eyebrows. Your, this <laughs> is your... Because I'll just say 10 bucks. True. Yeah, well, I'm asking you. <laughs> you uh, should put a number on it. And um, and if someone donates that amount, if one person, no, no, no if I collectively, you, oh, if, if collectively the equity mates, yeah, 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 community um, raises the figure, you will shave your eyebrows. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think that's okay. that's the spirit of it. Isn't okay. It? All right. What's the figure? Fifty grand. Yeah, I thought it was going to be <laughs> high. I'm I'm cool with that. Let's go. Is that is that unreasonable? I don't think that's unreasonable. That would be over a grand over a grand a day. Yeah. yeah, if everyone listening to this podcast donates 50 cents, we'll get there. Yeah, nice. Yeah. All right, well, there the, there you go. The challenge is on the table. <laughs> 50 grand and uh, Ren will shave his eyebrows. As I said, if you really want to see this in action, jump on YouTube or check out our Instagram page. Links to the donation page will also be in the show notes and on our Instagram. Nice. All right, well, let's get back to uh, leveraged ETFs. Uh, this question came through from Will. Hey, Bryce and Ren, I'd love to hear your thoughts around levered indices such as the TQQQ or SQQQ uh, given current market conditions. Look forward to hearing your comments. Love the pod. Thanks. All right. Well, thank you for that question, Will. Bryce, you've done a lot of work recently on leveraged ETFs. So I guess over to you. Thanks, Ren. <laughs> the work I was doing was actually trying to understand the impact of the fees on leveraged ETFs versus not. So to be cl clear here, I use leveraged ETFs as part of my portfolio, which give me uh, leveraged exposure to the US market and to the Australian market. So I use GEAR, G-E-A-R is the ticker uh, for U Australian, and I use GJUST, G-G-U-S for the US leveraged, and they both track essentially the ASX 200 and the S&P 500. So the equivalent would be buying the A200 beta shares or the SPY, whatever it is for the S&P 500. Specifically, what Will spoke about in his question was TQQQ and SQQQ. They're um, American ETFs that are leveraged. They leverage the NASDAQ. So the TQQ is long and the SQQ, it's actually an inverse and shorts the NASDAQ. Essentially, what leverage means is that it amplifies the returns of the index. So let's say it says it's a three times leveraged ETF. It means that you should expect three times the return of that index. So the S&P 500 goes up 1%. You should expect a 3% return. Correct. That is what it should do in theory. The differences between uh, the TQQ and SQQ and the ones that I use, both of the ones I use are beta shares is the, the underlying mechanics of it. And so we're not going to get into detail on that, but TQQ and SQQQ, 
use derivatives and options. So they're a synthetic leverage, whereas beta shares actually internally gear the fund and they borrow money themselves and, and leverage the fund that way. The question from Will was how are we thinking about it in, t- in the current environment with volatility? Yeah. Because in the short term, these products can be pretty effective because you're amplifying the short term price movements of the index. To your point, Ren, if the S&P goes up 1%, you're going to get 3%. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, if it goes down 1%, you lose 3% as well. So it Absol- works both ways. Absolutely. Yeah. Long term, though, the debate actually becomes more divisive. The reason being is that the way that these products work is they're matching the daily return, not the like annual return or the long term return. And when you do the maths on it, if you're not careful, it can actually be uh, like dilutive to your returns over time. And to sort of give an example of that, what happens is, let's say the index, you're putting $100 in. Yep. The index drops 10%. Yep. So your value is now $90. If you're just in the normal index, not leverage, you need the market to rise just over 11% to get back to that $100. Yep. In a leveraged ETF, let's say it's three times leveraged, your $100 drops to $70 because it's three times the 10% drop. You then need the market to rise. Well, you need your stock to rise 42% in order to get back to even. And because it's leveraged, you actually need the market to rise 14% to get back to even. So you can see there that you actually need the market to move more than if you were just in the uh, the non-leveraged index. What, where this becomes a problem though is it resets every day. And so that happens on day one. Day two, if the market drops again, you're already 3% down. Mm. And so you can see that over time, if there's large volatility, you actually need huge movements for you to start catching up. Yeah, so, so sorry, you, what, what you mean there, day one, it falls 10%. Day two, it rises 11%. If you were non-leveraged, you're back to even. Yeah. And then if day three falls again, you, you just fall again. Yeah. But uh, with the leverage product, day one, you fall 10%. It's actually down 30%. Day two, up 11% is up 33%. That's not enough to get back to even. Exactly. So then day three, another fall, you're falling even, even further. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, so my takeaway from that is that in times of volatility, leverage products slip. Yes. And so this has then led me to, all right, let's compare how this has played out over the last five or so years because we've experienced COVID, we've experienced the drop in 2022, yeah, well, et cetera. We've experienced a, yeah, a terrible month in 2020 and then a great year and a half and then a terrible year and then a pretty volatile time yes so we've kind of experienced all market conditions yes it's not it hasn't been great so how's it gone so so for gear which is the aussie one i then compared this to the a200 yep over the last five years so now and and to be clear both (coughs) gear and a200 track uh the top 200 australian stocks yeah gear is what three or it's just under three times it's between two and three times leveraged yeah yeah, so the ASX 200 is up 15%. Gear is flat. Oh, really? Yeah. In the past five years? Yeah. The reason is gear started to outpace A200 during the COVID recovery. Started smashing through it because there was that period of time where the volatility was just up, 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 up. And so it's the same. Your, yeah. your leverage on the upside is compounded. Yeah. But then it actually hasn't recovered from in the 2022 lows. It started coming back. Mm. But because of the volatility we've experienced since the start of last year, which has been overwhelmingly negative, it has struggled to actually catch up to and surpass the ASX 200 index. So it's actually flat. Um, However, if you then look at the impact of dividends, because you're getting leveraged return on dividends, yeah. um, you then become it, it becomes much closer. 
from just a pure share price point of view though, it, it's flat. Fascinating. So I'm even just looking at the two charts and just a cursory glance, you can see that um, the initial uh, February 2020 fall when COVID hit and it fell like 30% in a month, um, the gear, so the normal ASX 200 then hit all-time highs and passed all-time yeah, highs in yeah, 2021. Yeah. And by August 2021... So about 18 months later, it was the normal ASX 200 was up 7%. Yeah. Whereas gear, rather than 30%, it fell 60%. Mm. By August 2021, it was just returning to mm. break even. Mm. So I guess that's an, an example of uh, it takes more returns to make up for falls. It's, yeah. It, it's, the market needs to work a lot harder on the upside. Okay. Get back. So that this isn't how... Uh, like, this is changing my perception of the two products me too yeah which i, I want to get to that in a second because i want to um so i think it's important to remember dividends yep um because you do get three times the dividend return yep. um <clears throat> so then i did okay well that's interesting let's now look at the u.s version which is g just gg us and i compared that to spy which is the um spdr um s p 500 yeah yep so again, both of these products are tracking the same S&P group of 500, 500 companies. Yeah. Um, SPY is just tracking them, the 500 companies. GGAS is tracking the 500 companies with leverage. Yeah. There's also a small caveat that there's a currency hedging element as well, isn't there? Small caveat that when you look at the last five years makes has made a massive difference. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. yeah. Like we've missed the fall in the Aussie dollar and the... And the the return of that, like they've hedged out any currency, any oh, currency Oh, because you would, have, you would have benefited would, yeah, from... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've yeah, missed yeah. all the benefits. So for so people who are trying to get their head around that, because if you hadn't hedged the Australian dollar, as the Australian dollar falls, your investments in uh, US companies would have actually been worth more. Yeah. Because we price our investments in Aussie dollars, yeah. but we buy them in US dollars. Yeah. And so because it's the product is hedged, yeah. rather than getting that free kick... As the Aussie dollar falls, yeah, you just your you net miss asset it. value just or whatever it is yeah, yeah, just yeah. stays the same. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So we've missed all of that, <laughs> which is yep. slightly irritating. But it's the same story with gear. However, post COVID, G just absolutely smoked the S and P five hundred on the upside. Because like, it was leveraged. Because it was leveraged, but way more than than gear than gear did like it shot past isn't like, that because it just went higher though yeah it just had so much more momentum behind yeah. it and just went bang and so it absolutely smoked the s p 500 however it's the same story hasn't been able to recover since um since the fall in, in 2024 what what it, the apples to apples comparison would have been if there's an s p 500 etf in australia that is currency hedged yeah, I should look at that. Didn't look at that. Okay. Yeah. So the story's the same. Um, so then, then this got me to the point of like, right, well, <clears throat> because if you if you look at the since inception data for GJUS, which is the US one, so yeah, it's outperformed by about four percent, and that was since two thousand and fifteen. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. So a pretty good time to be in the US market. Pretty like good time if, to be in the if, US market. If the takeaway yeah. is. When the market is trending upwards, it's a good it's good to be in a volatile product. When it's trending downwards or going sideways, it's not good. Yeah. I mean, since 2015, it's been pretty good in the US. Yeah. It is confusing because if you have a look at the, the returns... So, for example, gear, the, the last five-year we say is flat. Three-year is the fund has returned 20%. The index is 11. Yeah, but that's... Because it would be coming off its COVID low. Yeah. Like so, three years would be October 2020. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, this really got me thinking, where to from here for these products? Because the long-term theory for the market is that the longer time period you take, like volatility sh- it is like theoretically less, if that makes sense. But it's more like... Um, You'd, you'd probably want to try and do the maths on it somehow or some back testing in some way to figure out like, are these products actually right for 30 years? Someone will have done that. Yeah. 
that's something we could certainly find. Yeah, because I know. Why that, don't you take that as homework? Yeah, I'll take that as homework because it's re- <laughs> it's really got me thinking. Like, um, yeah, is 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 this right for for my portfolio? But you, do my, you have my an gut's answer? still yes. Okay. Yeah. I feel like you buried your mic drop moment halfway through this segment, which was the five year returns. Gear was flat. A two hundred was up fifteen percent. For me, like that. Is, is, it, is yeah. Yeah, but that's five years. Like if you take the 10, um, you're better on the other side. All right. Well, I've just had a look uh, at... So the Vanguard Australian Shares Index, which tracks the top 200 Australian stocks, non-leveraged. Um, and then Gear, which tracks it leveraged. I've gone back to when Gear was first created. Uh, so early May 2014. Gear is up 9% in that time. So, in almost a decade, up 9%. VAS, in that same time period, is up 22%. Wow. There you go. Change your perception of leverage products, people. Yeah, big time. Certainly change mine. Yeah. Fascinating. A lot to think about. A lot to think about. Yeah. All right. Well, while well, we... Well, I think the story for me here is thank you, Will, for the question because I wouldn't have gone deep on this. Yeah. Uh had not been not been for that yeah. so it's definitely changed how i think about it yeah i mean the one thing that that those returns don't factor in is the leverage dividends but no. still but is dividends going to make up yeah i don't think it, it wouldn't make up the difference 15 yeah. percent difference yeah. yeah all right well i think this is a good time to take a break as we ponder that mm. then on the other side we're going to have the opposite of that well considered <laughs> and research segment that Bryce has just brought us. Uh, we're going to be calling the Specky Hotline Uh-oh. and speak to Specky McGee. <laughs> Becky has entered the studio. <laughs> Is that electric? Yeah, it's um, it's powered. So I don't know how I'm gonna get the headphones on. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm kind of. I like having them on. Hold on. Yo, hello. All right. <laughs> All right. Welcome back to Equity Mates. Uh, we have been joined by a special guest in the studio. Uh, he's <laughs> wearing his Halloween costume, a rocket ship. Specky McGee, thanks for joining us. Yes! <laughs> Good to be back. Happy birthday, Bryce. <laughs> Congratulations on the superior stock of the year, Alex. Thank you, thank you. Uh, is, it good? <laughs> is this is this like uh, sound <laughs> no, come no. through the to mic? Paint, to paint a picture of what we're seeing here is Specky McGee has walked in uh, in a rocket ship emoji costume that has a an inflatable mo- a motor in yeah. it to keep it inflated. Which, Which is if you can hear the... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah can, I'll, um, is it warm? It's actually kind of cools you down. Oh, nice. Um, but yeah, I'll send the invoice later. <laughs> <laughs> we'll certainly put some photos of this up on our socials. So go to our Instagram if you want to see. Uh, but Specky, we always like to touch base with you to hear what's coming across your desk at Specky HQ. Uh, you've given us some crackers in the past, some yep. crypto uh, coins. Banano is one that comes to mind. And a few specky stocks, so... Nice. What's, uh, what's going on, on uh, in your world? Well, it is good to be back. Thanks for calling the specky hotline. It's been a while. It's actually been over a year. That just goes to <laughs> show <laughs> the quality. <laughs> yeah. It hasn't been a good time for speckies. Well, it's interesting you say that. So I've done a bit of research on past specky McGee picks. Okay. Okay, so I've come on the show five times. Nice. Five different picks. Um... Now, before I tell you where the portfolio is at, as a comparison, where do you think the S&P 500 is at 
if you invested at uh, the dates of those five episodes, on average? Oh, good question. S- sorry, where where? I can wh- give you the dates if that helps. Give us the first date. Uh, 4th of March, 2021. Okay, so the question is, if we had invested at five points since March, 2021, when Specky came on the show, um, what would, how much would we have be up or down in our portfolio? Oh, in the, okay, we'd be up. <laughs> Don't, what, are you going to guess how much or? <laughs> but how much were we investing? It doesn't matter, uh, what doesn't percentage? Matter, yeah. On oh, average, percentage, same amount each time. Percentage, yeah, yeah. 4%. Up 4%? No, Brand? no, 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 up 22%. So unless I've done the maths wrong, it's down 1.6 percent. Oh really? Yeah, I think. Well, everything was quite it was quite topish around March 2021, wasn't it? Or cooling August off a bit. 2021. Yeah, was the top. Ah, oh, okay, okay. Anyway, there you go. But I mean, more importantly, where is the specky <laughs> portfolio? If you, Bryce, yes. around, if you're taking, Bryce is just playing around. I know. Around I know. I know. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm getting. Specky. I'm getting. I'm yeah. listening. He's playing on his phone, but he still absolutely smoked me in that game. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, All right, where would down. the uh, where would where's the, the specky <laughs> portfolio? <laughs> <laughs> You're in a rocket ship suit. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta take me seriously. I can't. <laughs> so hold on, hold on, hold on. So uh, are you gonna give us the five picks and then we'll sure. guess? That's or? a good call. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. so I banana can- boat, eye candy, banana. Oh, eye banana. candy. How, how yeah, many yeah, can yeah. you remember? Eye candy, banana. banana. Yeah. Um, then there was the um, th- there was the weed one. Was was there a weed? A weed? Uh, there was Seller Network. I don't actually know what it does. It's a <laughs> crypto. And then ITRM. It was a um, no. like urethra tract infection drug, UTR drug. Okay. Uh, well, that, that's what they made. And then finally, Party City Holdings. Party that's City. Right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, Party yeah, City. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So if we had invested <laughs> our money in those rather than the S&P 500, yep. what would our p- portfolio be looking like? I'm going to say down 50%. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to say uh, there, was, there was some okay ones in there. Uh, down uh, th- 31%. Well, put it this way before uh, Specky gives us the actual actually. answer. Um, I'm pretty sure those two cryptos would be down 80 or 90%. And I'm pretty sure Party City declared bankruptcy. So, <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. So down 92%. Party City is down 99 points. I think it's delisted. Okay. Um, <laughs> and so overall we're down, yeah, 79%, 80%. Okay, okay. So, so not great. Better off investing in the S&P 500. Yeah. And with that glowing endorsement of this segment, let's get to what's going across your desk today. Okay. All right. So, and just on Party City, City uh, hold co like I had a look through the uh, party house subreddit. Okay, okay we, we spoke about this last this time. <laughs> so they got delisted. Everyone was up in arms on the subreddit. The top comment was worst two thousand five hundred dollars I've ever spent. Lesson learned for a new investor: never listen to anyone on Reddit. Okay, <laughs> nice. So except, I, except Roaring Kitty, who Roaring made Kitty everyone right. with GameStop yeah. lots of money. So. I thought about that and I was like, okay, I've got a year's worth of ASX bets content here that I could sift through and find a specy, yeah. right? But then I thought, okay, I'm going to take this guy's advice. I'm not going to find a specy on Reddit. I'm going to find it another way. So I was listening to the Buy, Hold, Sell podcast. Okay. Um, Good plug. I, the Buy, Hold, Sell <laughs> podcast. Hey, you know, everyone's talking about a recession. No, no, I'm, I'm not hearing that. I don't want to hear a recession. I want to hear a risk on session. So Adam Dawes came on and his I think his most his speckiest tip was Amero International 3DA. Yeah. So get it on record. This stock is going to the moon, all right? Okay. Um actually you know what? Forget about that. It's not going to the moon. It's going interstellar. Okay. And on that note, I'm gonna leave you with one thing. I've asked an interstellar friend. To give this stock tip on behalf of Specky McGee. So here we go. All right, all right, all right. Matthew McConaughey here, folks. I've got a piping hot stock tip for you. I'm bringing you this stock tip on behalf of Specky McGee and the Specky Hotline, y'all. Forget what Bryce and Wren say. This puppy is going to the freaking moon, baby. Marrow International. It's currently trading at 26 cents with a market cap of 100 mil. Amero build literal rockets that could literally go to the moon. They're a leader in 3D printing. 
Not that plastic stuff, we're talking boronitride nanotubes, we're talking lightweight high strength designs for aerospace defense, etc. They use cutting edge technologies to produce refractory metals and speciality alloy powders for critical applications. Clients include names like Boeing and Raytheon. Forget about eye candy. Forget about Bonanno. Forget about Party City. The Specky McGeezers will have their vengeance in the form of I'm on their titanium powder technology. This is financial advice. Past performance is sometimes an indicator of future performance. Strap yourselves in, folks. This has Tin Bagger written all over it. We're going <laughs> interstellar dang nabbit. <laughs> Becky McGee's nice. he's back, he's done it again. We should be very clear that <laughs> Matthew McConaughey does not speak for the Equimax community. This is not he financial speaks on advice. Specky though. Uh, it was Specky, uh, Specky does not represent the Equimates community. <laughs> but uh, with a clear caveat to do your own research, thank you, Specky. We'll speak to you again soon.